Want to know how you can gain access to capital to jumpstart your journey to entrepreneurial success for entrepreneurs who are just starting out or those who have been in business for years? Minority Business Access is your podcast. Welcome to our show, where we will guide you in avoiding the pitfalls and thriving in your chosen business. Now, on to the show with your host, Solomon Ali. Hello, everyone. Hello. Thank you all for tuning in to Minority Business Access. It's going to be a really exciting, exciting year this year. You know, we're all coming out of 2020, and 2020 was a really tough year with COVID-19. A lot of companies, a lot of business owners suffered um, going out of business, things like that, struggling, even with the government's help and assistance. So this year, is hopefully, will be a lot more promising than last year. And so what we're going to try to bring today is we're going to talk about a little bit more on minority business access about investing. Um, individual investors looking for investments and what type of investments. There are some people out there like myself that's looking to be a part of roll-ups and things of that nature, finding the right companies to actually assist them in rolling up um, companies within their industry, which is very exciting. If you've never been a part of a roll-up or things like that, or a company growing and expanding through roll-ups or acquisitions, it's something that you should really, really be a part of, in my opinion. Now, I want you to keep this, keep this in mind. Most acquisitions really don't actually work out they actually end up failing before one reason or the other. The most common reason that they fail is because of the cultures are not able to actually blend together. The second most common is probably the duplications and things of that nature don't actually provide um, the cost savings and cuts that they actually thought it would bring. And then the third is that the management team is not able to execute um, the way everyone hoped for and the way they had planned. So it's a lot of other reasons that um, taking place. Those are the three reasons I believe are the most common. Um, so what you got to do is kind of figure out where you want to be as an investor. What do you want to invest in? Why do you want to invest in it? You all heard Warren Buffett and other um, top investors say this, invest in something that you know, invest in something that you like, invest in something that you understand. And that's what we try to do at RC Ali Corporation. If you go to our website, SolomonRCAli.info, you'll find that we have done the due diligence uh, work for you in looking at various companies. We're not, look, we're not promoters. We're not market makers. We're not broker dealers. We're not trying to push you to buy a stock or pump up a stock or a company for you to buy. That's not what we're trying to do. What we're trying to do is educate people, hardworking people who have a few dollars to invest to make the proper investments and not just be throwing their money to chance. There's too many people currently just throwing their money to chance and not understanding investing, okay? What you have to do is one, don't invest in stocks, period. Yes, that's what I said, don't invest in stocks. What do I mean by that? Invest in the company. Okay, yes, the company may have stocks for you to invest in, but before you invest in the stock, please invest in the company. Do your due diligence. Do your homework. Get to know the company. Get to understand whether or not it's an industry you like, an industry that you understand, okay? Understand where that industry is going. Look at the company. See if it's a company that you like, a company and a business that you understand. Is it doing the things that fit your value systems and everything of that nature? How has management performed in the uh, past? How do you believe they're going to perform in the future compared to all their competitors? Okay, what are the top companies in that industry doing? How does management in the company compare to those other companies in the industry? Does management are they planning on bringing something new to the table, new to the industry to get everything going? So these are the things, what I say, don't invest in the stock, invest in the company. These are the things that are really, really important. One, it also help you to get over any fears that you may actually have about investing and what may happen in the long run. And it'll also give you a level of confidence, okay? It'll give you some security in the sense that you've done your homework, 
you know what's actually going on, you can stand your position and you can stand it with confidence and assurance that, hey, no matter what's going on, the rumors when PRs come out, whether they're good or bad, you're not you're not turning around going like the trees in the wind, blowing whichever way. You're standing fast because you're like the root of the tree. You did your due diligence. You know what's going on with the company. You believe what management can do. You compared them historically. You looked at their information. You looked at their charts and things like that. So that's the type of investment we're going to be looking at. You know, this funny saying here by um, Paul, you know, it's like, look, you want to watch paint dry? That's what you should be doing when you invest. It shouldn't be a wild roller coaster ride. It really shouldn't. You should be making an investment in something, and then you just go forget about it because you ain't got to worry about it because you already did the homework on the front end. So when people say, oh, the stock's really um, gone up 300%, you're like, huh, okay, because you've done the investigation, you know, and that's what you were expecting anyway. But if somebody says, oh, wow, well, you know, it's down 300%, you're like, hmm, okay. You're not phased by it because you have done your homework. When you have done your homework in something, you know two plus two is four. So no one can sway you one way or the other. So you're not just blowing in the wind like the leaves on a tree. You know and stand your position with confidence. So that's what we're going to talk about pretty much today is how to invest, why to invest, and everything of that nature. And, hey, we're going to try to just watch the grass grow. How about that? Okay, let's get to the video. In the 1600s, the Dutch East India Company employed hundreds of ships to trade gold, porcelain, spices, and silks around the globe. But running this massive operation wasn't cheap. In order to fund their expensive voyages, the company turned to private citizens, individuals who could invest money to support the trip in exchange for a share of the ship's profits. This practice allowed the company to afford even grander voyages, increasing profits for both themselves and their savvy investors. Okay, people, listen. This is the important thing. Here's the difference of getting in as a retail investor and getting in on the early stages. When you get in on the early stages, see, the ship owner, think of that as your business, right? He goes to the shareholders, potential shareholders. All the shareholders invest in the company. They invest in the company. When are they doing it? In the early stages. When you invest in a company in its early stages, that's when you get the high, high returns. If you invest after it's already a retail company and everything of that nature, your returns are minimized, all right? That means the company has to do a whole lot more to actually perform to deliver the type of returns you're going to need to get a good return on your investment. It's a lot harder for them to do, okay? That would be equivalent to a high school team playing a um, college team in football and you're expecting the outcome for that high school team to um, win. It's not going to happen. In, it's not going to happen. So that's what you're looking at. You're the owner. You're going to shareholders, potential investors. They're investing. They're sharing in the profits. Okay? What profits? Your growth your growth. You as the owner have already shown that you have the ability to run the business, to manage the business, okay? You've shown that to operate the business. If you have read the book, one of the books that I um, recommend it, okay, which is um, Wretched Man in Babylon, it talks about the various principles. One of those principles is I would not go to a brick maker for him to go buy me jewelry. All right, I'm going to lose my money. I'm going to go to a jewelry guy for him to buy me jewelry. If I want bricks done or a house built, I'm going to go to the brick maker for him to do that. So in other words, you're getting people and you're investing in people who are skilled in their craft, skilled in what they do. Very important. So when we invest in a company, we're looking for the management team to be skilled in what it does. We're looking for the CEOs and the other VPs and things of that nature to be skilled in what they do in managing and leading, okay? 
and we're looking for them to have that network of professionals working with them to give them the transparency in their books and records and their transaction. People, that's extremely important because what we're gauging when we do our due diligence is this. We're looking at historical information to try to map out what may happen in the future. Very important. So when, as an investor, what you're doing, okay, so if you're like me and you want to invest in the company, are you a new investor, here's what you're going to do. Okay, I want to invest in this company, but what am I investing in? Oh, I'm investing in the growth of the company. I'm investing in this owner going out, getting another ship, getting another ship, getting another ship, and doing more routes. I can feel confident in this owner being able to do that because he's running an existing business currently that's already successful and he only needs your money and my money to do what? To expand so he can do more and more and more of the same, okay? So that's why I wanted to stop it right here. I want you to picture this as the company, as the owner, Picture yourselves as the shareholders, as that company go out and do, does its thing and looking to grow and expand. You as the shareholder, you're reaching a, uh, you're receiving a piece of the profits on each and everything that takes place through what we call shares. Okay, let's go back. And they're savvy investors. Selling these shares in coffee houses and shipping ports across the continent, the Dutch East India Company unknowingly invented the world's first stock market. Since then, companies have been collecting funds from willing investors to support all kinds of businesses. And today, the stock market has schools, careers, and even whole television channels dedicated to understanding it. But the modern stock market is significantly more complicated than its original incarnation. So how do companies and investors use the market today? Let's imagine a new coffee company that decides to launch on the market. First, the company will advertise itself to big investors. If they think the company is a good idea, they get the first crack at investing and then sponsor the company's initial public offering, or IPO. This launches the company onto the official public market, where any company or individual who believes the business could be profitable. So, what we're talking about, the innate stages, okay? Innate stages. Not the innate stages of the company. The innate stages of the company ready to go public. Transformation from a privately, um, a privately ran company to a public company. What does that mean? A private company is only a company that have a handful of shareholders who have invested in it. It could just be the owner and the founder himself. It could be the owner, the founder, his family, and his friends, okay? So they will have the biggest opportunity for the biggest reward because they were in the earliest, okay? So the next phase is just going public, just before they go public, there's a round, okay? And so now they get to come in and take in money because they need the money so that they can do this and do some more of their expansion plan before they go public. There's another round normally right after, and that's right after they go public. It's still retail investing, but it's so early in the retail stage of that company hitting the market. Normally, this is after a reverse merger or initial IPO, okay? You will see the stock just kind of take off and do some really wonderful things. And the earlier you get in and that you can get in, right, the more money you will make in the long run. As the company seasons, okay, season, let's say, has been on the stock exchange or some type of platform for a year or more, what's going to happen is it levels off. And when it levels off, the company has to do more, run harder to actually make a difference, okay? So to move their stock price up, they got to run harder and do more, all right? That's going to be a little bit more difficult. But in the beginning, when the family and friends come in, all they had to do was what? Get the company up, whatever their idea and concept was, get it up, get it going, get it working. Not too, not too hard, right? 
The next thing they had to do is what? When they were ready to go public after they proved their model was get more people to invest in them, and those people typically want to invest in them because of what? They looking at the previous model that they have, and they know, oh, wow, this guy knows how to make bricks. He can do this, okay? So I'm investing with someone who understands. What they're doing is that this guy knows how to make bricks, so I'm investing with someone who understands. So what they're doing is saying, this guy knows how to make bricks. I'm investing with someone who understands. When you look at it, right, when you look at it, Here's what's happening. The owner is taking their company public. Now, you want to get in. P please understand. You know, at Solomon R. C. Ali Corporation, we say this, ABCs. We help to arrange capital and funding for business, whether that's through um, financing of debt or equity. We help companies arrange the financing so they can grow and live their dreams out, right? or we help uh, investors such as yourself, such as myself, to invest in a company in its early stages so that they can get the huge returns. And you know what, I, I just didn't do that justice. So they can get the huge returns. Okay, now you got it, all right? So that just took me totally out of my personality and everything like that, but I'm serious about that. That's how we win. When we invest in the early stages, right before the company goes public, right after it is public, we're in there, okay? We're doing our thing. And that's where you see those huge returns, people. But we don't do none of this, none of this, without investigating the company, okay? What does that investigating mean? We're doing our homework. We're doing our homework. We're researching on the company. We're looking at all the historical information we have on the company. We're looking at all the historical information on the industry, all right? We're looking up everything we can find on management. We're looking at all the different type of um, third-party information from analysts, from people writing PRs about the industry, things of that nature. We're looking at all of this and we're just putting it together like a puzzle so that we can have a good idea of how this company was performed. So now they're coming to us so that we can invest. And so when we invest, we're going to share in all of that growth. So let's say today the company might be worth, let's say $10 million, all right? And so as we give them money, let's say we give them $10 million. So the company's worth $10 million, we give them $10 million, all right? So now the company is gonna go out and do, and let's say they go from being worth 10 million because we gave them 10 million also to being worth 100 million, right? So now we as the investors get to share in all of that $100 million company now. When we initially invested in that company, Okay, we initially invested in that company. It was only worth $10 million. We lent the company, we the investors, you and I, we lent the company more money to go out and fulfill its dream, fulfill its vision. We were comfortable with loaning it more money or investing in it more money. Why? Because we did our homework. We did our due diligence, right? So they did it. They grow to a hundred million. We share in the success. The official. Okay. IPO, initial public offering. That is not the only way to go public. You can do what's called a DPO. A DPO is a direct public offering. That means that the company itself goes public by itself without an investment banking house, underwriters, market makers, and things of that nature. Now, it will be more challenging for them to do that, but they can do it, okay? It'll be an uphill battle, but they can do it. That's a direct public offering, okay? That will be a little more risque if you're going to invest in that because you don't have the support of all the market makers making a market in the stock, but it can be done. When, you, when they do an initial public offering, you have the investment banking house underwriting the deal, arranging the capital, and also assisting talking to their network and making a market for the stock, 
okay? So that's the difference there. Now, one of the favorite things that I like to do, and you've probably been hearing of it a lot, is a SPAC, okay? I'm not going to talk about SPACs right now, okay? That's a pur uh, special purpose acquisition company. I'm not going to talk about it because I, I like it, but I also like what we call reverse mergers. Reverse mergers is taking a legal entity, which is a privately held company, and merging it with a public legal entity, which is a company that is already public, but it doesn't have a operations. And so you take a company that is private, that has great operations, great management, and everybody's doing it, it hits on the things that we like for it to hit on. What are those things? Good management, they can do the job. Um, good Lord, I almost had a um, brain fart. Good management, they can do the job. Double digit or triple digit growth. Most professionals are gonna say double digit growth. I'm gonna always say triple digit growth is extremely important. Please don't forget that. So good management, they can do the job. Triple digit growth. You're looking for an industry that that business is in that's going to actually climb and continue to climb. And you're also looking for that management team to reinvest their capital in the growth of their business. So those are the things that you're looking for. So we take that and we merge it with the um, public company, which doesn't have an operation. And so now you have what we call TNT at least in my opinion, because now you have a publicly traded company that typically goes up in value in its stock price, okay, almost immediately in most um, scenarios, not always, but almost every time it goes up in value, okay, just from merging the two together. So you instantly are going to see a return on your investment, especially if you're in on the early stages, just before the uh, reverse merger or just after the reverse merger. So you make a lot of money, people. Here's where people make anywhere from 300 to 3,000% 3, return, okay, in a very short period of time. I'm not gonna qualify what a very short period of time could be. It could be a few months, it could be a few years, but it is typically in a very short period of time, okay? But it doesn't always work out that way, and that's very important for you to um, know. But you will know it if you do your homework prior to, right? You will know, okay? So now, in a case scenario like that, you're gonna have to do your homework on the company, definitely before it merged, because it might drag the stock price down. But typically, the stock price would actually go up, because let's say if the stock price was trading at $2 a share, and it didn't have an operating company, and you bring this phenomenal operating company and you place it inside, the stock price is probably gonna go to $2.50, $3, $4 a share. You just made money. That easy. Like turning on the lights. If that's what you want to do, that's the best way to invest. That's the way I like to invest. It doesn't matter what the industry is. It doesn't matter if they're on the New York Stock Exchange, NASDAQ, whatever. Okay? We like to do it with small cap companies. We like to do it with um, penny stock companies because you get the greatest returns. You get the greatest volatility. You get basically a lot of rewards and sharing and helping that company go from maybe one location to 50 locations. And a company could have 50 locations and you're helping them go to 200 locations, okay? So you get a lot in return for sharing in the growth and investing in those type of situations, okay? We're gonna go ahead and continue. As we're gonna see, this is a really good video. It's a short video, but it's really good. And I want you guys to keep your eye on if you're thinking about investing, if you're thinking about investing, you will be remiss if you do not go to Sol SolomonRCLE.info and look up some of the things that we are doing. Not for you to take our advice on investing in that particular company, because we're not market makers, we're not broker dealers, we're not promoters. We're not trying to promote a company we were working on arranging capital. We're trying to educate you on the process, on how it's done. 
We're trying to save you some time so that you'll know exactly what to look for when you're looking for a company. Because, see, you might want to go over here and look at XYZ company. But when you go look at XYZ company, you can take the ABC company we just did, right? The one we just done, you can take that as a model, okay, as a model and go look over here. And some of you, okay, that just don't have a whole lot of time, you're just going to say, oh, shoot, ABC looked good for me. They did all the homework and everything. Shoot, I'm good. That's what I would do. <laughs> I can't speak for you, but that's what I would do, okay? Time is money, people. So we're going to get back to the uh, video here. and We're going to keep this moving along. Might buy a stock. Buying stocks makes those investors partial owners in the business. Their investment helps the company to grow. And as it becomes more successful, more buyers may see potential and start buying stocks. As demand for those stocks increases, so does their price, increasing the cost for prospective buyers and raising the value of the company's stocks people already own. For the company, this increased interest helps fund new initiatives and also boosts its overall market value by showing how many people are willing to invest in their idea. However, if for some reason a company starts to seem less profitable, the reverse can also happen. If investors think their stock value is going to decline, they'll sell their stocks with the hopes of making a profit before the company loses more value. As stocks are sold and demand for the stock goes down, the stock price falls, and with it, the company's market value. This can leave investors with big losses, unless the company starts to look profitable. There is no crystal ball to know which company is going to do phenomenal or anything of that nature. There, there just isn't. I wish there was. There's no magic secret, okay? There, there isn't. And if someone tells you there's a secret to investing and to making all this money, run. Run the other way. Don't look back. In fact, don't even talk to that person again because they're blowing smoke up your butt, or maybe they had it blown up their butt. There's no secret. You have to do your homework. You have to investigate the industry. You have to investigate the company, the management team. Can they do the job? Okay. Even if they had past failures, what did they learn from their past failures? Some people have past failures, and they come out on the other side brighter, smarter, because they learn something from it. So you got to determine that for yourself. You are making a judgment call. You're the teacher. You're determining what grades you're going to give them. So you got to do the work. And when you do that work, okay, you have no one to blame but yourself. If you do not do the work, you have no one to blame but yourself because you just threw your money out there. You basically flushed it down the toilet. Who can you blame for flushing it down the toilet because you were too lazy to do the work? That's on you. You can't blame anyone else for that. But if you do the work and you understand what the management team is doing, you understand the industry, you like the industry, you understand that the industry is going to continue to grow. You understand that the business that you're looking to invest in, that company has the potential to do triple digit um, in growth, okay? Those are the things you should be looking at. You should be looking at long-term long investments, not short-term investments, not day trading the stock. You, the purpose of getting in is to sit back and share in the growth and the vision of the company that as it prosper, you prosper as well. But if you don't do the work, someone can come and put out some bad news. The stock can, can begin to fumble, all right? And as it go ahead and fumble and then stumbles on down, what are you going to do? You're going to do like everyone else who didn't do their homework. You're going to panic, and then you're going to start selling. Scared money don't make no money, baby. I'm going to tell you, scared money do not make money. It doesn't happen, all right? You only way you can't be the scared money is you do the research. You already know what the expectations are. Are they going to hit those expectations all the time? No, they're not. But what you're betting on is that their track record is strong enough, their stats are strong enough as a company, as a management unit, that they're going to be able to achieve the things that they said. 
Now, they might say they're going to achieve 50 locations. I might, in doing my research, say, yeah, they said they're going to do 50. I only think they're going to get 15. You understand what I'm saying now? They said they're going to do 50. But I'm looking and grading the management team. I'm grading how much capital they have to work with, how, much, how many people might invest in them. Uh, I think you're only going to get 15. I think to get to 15 is going to take you longer than you expect. So I'm betting that, oh, okay, they can get to 15. I don't know if you can get to 50, but I know you can get to 15. Well, that means I'm going to share in that growth, okay, and I'm going to participate in that, and as they win, I win. But now, if I'm looking at it, you're looking at it, and you're doing your homework and your due diligence, and they're talking about they're going to do 50 locations, and you're looking at it, and they've never done one location. In fact, the one that they're currently running is not being ran too well, and you're like, hmm, I don't think they can do one. So what would that tell you? Probably shouldn't invest in that company. Okay, so let's keep this real. See, I'm trying to make this real simple and real easy because everyone wants to make it so complicated. It's not complicated. People listen to what I'm saying. Look at me. Look at me. I'm talking to you right now. I'm trying to demystify investing in companies. That's what we're trying to do. Demystify the investing into companies. I'm trying to make it real simple for you because, look, I'm not the smartest kid in the um, tool shed there, right? And neither are you. There's no one out there that can predict what humans and stuff can do, what the outcome that's going to be predicted tomorrow. God can, but none of us is him, right? So the best thing we can do is our homework and look at the past performance of these companies the past performance of their stocks, the past performance of management, the past performance of the things that they've tried and failed and things like that. And every once in a while, again, like I said, in our failures, sometimes it makes us stronger and better. So don't just look at the company and say, well, it failed up, it's not a good um, place to invest. Sometimes you got to really read between the lines. I know like when I used to play ball and stuff like that, you get hurt, you want to come back from a what? An injury, so you work out a little bit harder. Some people who are extremely competitive, so that's what you're looking for in the management team and the CEO. Is he really competitive? Because if he's not, then you probably want to run because, hey, he's not going to get the job done. But maybe he's really competitive, his management team is really competitive, they felt really bad because they struck out and lost a big one and couldn't get the job done, but this time they're on fire. They didn't dotted all their I's and crossed all their T's. So you got to try to find that silver lining and see, hey, did these guys learn from their previous mistakes? I don't know how to tell you really how to do that. You have to determine that yourself when you're doing your due diligence. Okay, what I typically do and would strongly recommend that you continue to do as well, I look at the history and I see where they've been successful and I try to bet on successful patterns. Okay, so that's what I typically do. And guess what? Just because they were successful before in the past, unfortunately, doesn't mean they're going to be successful today and trying to get it done. So it's, um, it's that as well. So there you have it. So that's why we call it investing, okay? Because you really don't freaking know. And anybody who tells you that they have all the answers, they're blowing smoke up, you know what, okay? So we're going to get back to the um, video. And don't be a junkie for news and everything like that. Listen to all the news. But when you see good news, don't go run out and sell. If you see bad news. Don't go run out and sell and um, stuff like that. Or don't, if you want to, like me, don't just start buying because you got some bad news out there and you know about the company. You know, make sure you're comfortable with your due diligence, please. That's what's going to save you money. That's what's going to make you a good investor. That's what's going to make you money over money over money and time after time again you'll keep making money you are going to have some losses don't don't think anything i'm saying is a hundred percent without losses you're not going to have a hundred percent win in every investment you will have some losses 
but your losses will be very, very minimum to the person who just threw caution to the wind and invested on a hot stock tip and they didn't know anything about it, okay? So we're gonna get back to the video. They're doing a pretty decent job and actually going over this. I'm sorry, they're doing a really good job in breaking it down into layman's terms so we all can get it and understand it. Profitable again. This seesaw of supply and demand is influenced by many factors. Companies are under the unavoidable influence of market forces, such as the fluctuating price of materials, changes in production technology, and the shifting costs of labor. Investors may be worried about changes in leadership, bad publicity, or larger factors like new laws and trade policies. And of course, plenty of investors are simply ready to sell valuable stocks and pursue personal interests. All these variables cause day-to-day -day noise in the market, which can make companies appear more or less successful. And in the stock market, appearing to lose value often leads to losing investors, and in turn, losing actual value. Human confidence in the market has the power to trigger everything from economic booms to financial crises. And this difficult-to-track variable is why most professionals promote reliable long-term investing over trying to make quick cash. However, experts are constantly building tools in efforts to increase their chances of success in this highly unpredictable system. But the stock market is not just for the rich and powerful. With the dawn of the internet, everyday investors can buy stocks in many of the exact same ways a large investor would. And as more people educate themselves about this complex system, they too can trade stocks, support the businesses they believe in, and pursue their financial Let's pause it right here. Everyday investors can buy stocks. That's you, people. Everyday investors. They can go in, find a company that's in an emerging industry that's going to grow and scale, okay? That's you. You can take your money and invest. Look, I'm Solomon R.C. Ali. I've sat on the board of directors of three publicly traded companies. Three okay, publicly traded companies. I've been an officer, okay, of three publicly traded companies. My duties and responsibility was to arrange the funding and the capital for those companies, okay? That's huge. I sat on the board as an officer and the director of three publicly traded companies where I had the sole responsibility to arrange the capital for these companies. Of the three companies, two of them, basically cornered the market. The energy company, NDR Energy, was the largest minority energy company in the United States of America. Let me say that again. The energy company was one of the largest energy companies, minority energy companies, in the United States of America. The other was a company called Revolutionary Concepts who invented the I, well, who invented um, smart home technology that a company, our exclusive licensee, iTalk365, had licensed to companies like Ring, SkyBell, um, Heathcote, CIP, um, things like that. Those type of companies, um, it's like huge. You know, you guys probably know Ring Doorbell was one of our licensees, all right? They use our intellectual property. All of these companies have their own intellectual property, but we invested more money in our intellectual property in the development of that than basically the other companies did. This is why doing your homework is so important. So when you're sitting here and you're listening to me and you're saying, well, I don't know if he knows what he's talking about. Guys, this is what I did for a living. I raised money for companies and of the three, of the three publicly traded companies that I worked with, I worked with, two of them, two of them became leaders in the United States of America, leaders, two of them. And as a man of color, that's saying a lot. And what that should be telling you is, oh wait, if you look like me, you can do it too, but what do you have to do? Guess what? You gotta do your homework. You gotta do your homework. You can't just throw it to the wind and say, oh, I got a hot, um, stock tip. It doesn't work that way. You got to do your homework. You got to learn about management. You got to learn about what's going on. You got to learn about their failures and the things of that nature. Hey, what did they learn? Because they may have learned a way to go around some of the loopholes.
Okay. Sometimes that's what we learn from failure. You know, so you got to understand that. What did they learn from their previous successes? So they understand where to step and where not to step. You got to understand that. You got to understand whether or not these guys can get the job done. Why I bring that up and share that with you, I want you to understand how unique that is, okay? I said I was an officer and director of three publicly traded companies. This ain't a boasting thing. This is a factual thing. There are currently over 5 million companies in the United States of America. 5 million companies in the United States of America at any given time with at least 10 employees or more, okay? That's all there is. 5 million companies in the United States of America with at least 10 employees or more, okay? Not counting the ones that don't have, uh, that have less than 10 employees. Now, of that, minority companies, People that look like me, minority in this case, I'm talking about specifically black-owned companies, black-managed. There is less than 114,000 companies that are black-owned, black-managed with um, 10 employees or more. You got me? All right, you're starting to see where this is going real quick, okay? So you're talking to somebody who understands how to invest and how to make money. Well, let's take it a little further. Of all of those, 5 million, now you have 13,900 and some change. Let's just say under 15,000 publicly traded companies in the United States. You have under 15,000 publicly traded. I believe the number is more like 13,900 and some change that's publicly traded. Now guess what? There's only approximately 13 that's black owned, that's black managed, that's black controlled where the majority of the shareholders are black or is black owned, black managed, okay? That's publicly traded, 13. 13 people. And of the 13, you gotta remember, didn't I tell you three of the publicly traded companies? I sat as an officer and a director where my responsibility was to arrange and to raise them capital. And of the three, two of them became leaders within their industries and in technology and the smart home technology we cornered it okay and energy we were the largest minority owned energy company in the United States so people that's what I'm talking about you got to know who you're talking to and what you're investing in so when I'm looking at a company I'm not looking at it from the same lens you might be looking at it from Okay, so you might want to shift your thinking a little bit and say, oh, wow, if I can learn one thing from that cat Solomon, just one thing from Solomon, okay, it's going to make you a better investor. It's going to keep you from losing some money if you learn one thing. My God, if you learn two things, you're on your way to making some money. If you learn three things, you're going to be in the money, all right? And if you learn more than that, my God, you're going to be unstoppable. But you need to understand, everything is not going to be 100%. So again, you're going to hear Solomon always say, you ain't got to lie, cheat, or steal in business. You don't have to lie, cheat, or steal in business. You have to do the what? The work. The work is what's important, people. See, the reason people lie, cheat, and steal is because what? They can't do the work. So they have to pull some stuff out of wherever and they got to make up some stuff and get you to believe it because they can't do the work. When you can do the work, you ain't got to do those things. You'd go do what? You go do the work. So when someone tells me about a stock or a company or something like that, I'm just like, okay. And guess what I go do? I go sit down and I start pulling it out. I pull out those 10Ks. I pull out those 10Qs. I pull the information. And then I start making my comparisons, looking at the historicals, looking at other companies, what they're doing in the industry. And I start looking to see, okay, what can be added to create more value to this company? How can it be added? When can it be added? Because, hey, anybody out there knows how to cook, right? If you know how to cook, you can't turn around and just put everything in the pot at the same time unless you're making a stew, right? You got to place the right ingredients in at the right time. And it's the same here. 
Sometimes management may want to do certain things, but you got to inject certain things at the right time to be able to accomplish your goals and accomplish your objectives. So see, that's what investing is all about. You know, I didn't mean for this to sound like a lecture today. I hope I didn't bore anybody, but we're going to get back to the video, but I just need you to get this and understand it, especially, especially if you are a investor looking to make profits, looking to have returns where it's not at risk, okay? I know I don't like putting my money at risk, so I would assume you don't want to put your money at risk, okay? I like to have my money work hard for me, okay? I want it to work hard. I want it to come back, though, when it's finished working, guess what, with some friends. See, if I put some money out there, I want it to come back with some friends. The friends are called profits people. See, that's what I want. And I hope you want the same because I'm not just throwing it to chance. So if you're like me, you want to make sure, you know, that you're investing in a company in its early stages. If you're like me, you want to make sure you're investing in a company just before it goes public, right after it became public. You know, listen, people, we got a lot of um, content on minority business access that what you're currently watching, go back and look at some of this stuff, okay? We bring in some of the top leading experts and trust law, okay? We brought in one of the guys who sat there and helped um, participate in writing the FICA scores and everything like that and consulted with the government. We, that's the kind of people we bring in. We bring in people who are the top of their field that can tell you some things and some secrets. And if you learn just one thing from them, it's going to help you in your life. It's going to help your family. It's going to help your generations to come, okay? You know, people challenge me on a trust, an irrevocable trust, and what's the difference, and this and that, right? And I, I don't get into what we call a pissing contest with anyone. If they want to be right, they can be right. I know what I know. I'm not trying to prove a point. I don't need to. What I know is this. I know where I got what? My information from. I know what my information said. And if the information is wrong, then I guess, yeah, I would be wrong. But if everyone has already agreed, okay, if I go to an expert, all right, if I go to an expert in trust law who basically wrote pretty much all the trust law um, at least the current trust law for the United States and how everyone interacts and things like that and was the um, leading expert for a period of time, I go to that person and he tells me how to do it. Do you think I'm probably in good hands? I think so. So no matter who comes against me, I can stand there with confidence because I know where I went to get the information and I know who they are. I know that they were the leading expert. So that's what I'm trying to tell you. I am pretty good at this stuff. I am an expert at building companies. I am an expert at building companies. And I just told you that. And you've seen that for yourself. You don't have to take my word for it. I'm Solomon R.C. Ali. I was on the board of three publicly traded companies. Of the three, two of them led the way within their industries, okay? That's important to know, people, because that lets you know that when you invest, when you're following the advice and stuff, I'm not a stock promoter. I'm not a broker dealer. I'm not a market maker. I ain't trying to pump up a stock or anything. Don't need to. I know how to go do the homework, and that's what I'm trying to teach you so that you can do the exact same thing, the exact same thing. Go do your homework, invest, change your life, change your family's life, change your friends and things of that nature, okay? That's what you want to do. So go to SolomonRCLE.info, speak to my team, look at some of the deals that we might be working on or some of the white paper or blogs or whatever it is that um, my people put together for your purposes because that's why we're doing it is to educate you. It's for educational purposes only. So take the education, use it as a tool, as a part of your arsenal to benefit you and your family, okay? So we're gonna get back to the video. I think this is a really hot video. Again, I like it because it's simple. 
okay? And I always say, people who know me, I always say I'm a simple person. You know, I keep it simple because that's the best way to make money is to keep it simple. If you start making things complicated, then you start losing money. Support the businesses they believe in and pursue their financial goals. The first step is getting invested. Interested in pursuing your own financial goals? Download a free audio version of The Richest Man in Babylon on audible.com slash ted ed. You'll not only get timeless advice on making and investing money, but also an imaginative take on life in ancient Mesopotamia. People, I want you to understand something. When you invest in the early stages, all right, you're typically buying your stock from the company itself. When you invest in the early stages, you're typically buying the stock from the company itself, okay? When you invest later on, okay, and let's say in round two or round three, you're typically buying the stock either from the company or one of the private equity or VC investors. Very important. You're typically at that point buying the stock from the company, a private equity investor, or a VC. Very important to remember that. When you get to retail investing, you're typically just buying it from other investors who bought retail, okay? If you're a retail investor, typically you're buying it from um, other people who bought retail. So this pool of people, of family and friends, private equity and VC people, that's a very small pool, okay, that you would be buying from. When it becomes a pretty well-known stock and pretty mature, it becomes a really large pool of retail investors, and retail investors are just buying from each other. So if I'm a retail investor, um, I might buy the stock at five bucks, and I might sell it to another retail um, investor at $5.10, okay? And so the company is not benefiting directly from it. It does benefit indirectly because it helps to continue to support the overall market value of the enterprise, all right? So very important to remember that, all right? We're going to get back to the um, movie here. Download a free audio version of The Richest Man in Babylon. Oh, my God. Slash Richest Man in Babylon. I, I, it, look, Richest Man in Babylon, it's a must. I, I said it on many, many podcasts. He came out and said, now, look, I want y'all to understand something. Some of these videos I see prior to me narrating. I hadn't seen this one. Didn't even know. Okay? So that that's pretty hot. You'll not only get timeless advice on making and investing money, but also an imaginative take on life in ancient Mesopotamia. So people, listen, investing is simple. What are you going to do? First, you're going to do your due diligence. You're going to look at the company. You're going to look at the industry. You're going to look at the previous work that was actually going on, okay, within the company. If they made mistakes, you're going to analyze the mistakes and see if you can see if they have learned from it, okay. You're going to go in with your eyes open, all right, just because they had a great track record um, previously. You're not going to be naive and think that, oh, wow, they may not make a mistake tomorrow, okay? So you're not gonna be naive. You're going to be good, solid, savvy investors. And that start with looking at the financial history for the last three years. Looking at all the Ks, looking at all the Qs, okay? Looking at the eight Ks. Looking in at management, dis um, management discussion section. See what's going on. You're gonna go turn around and you're gonna look at and pull the eight Ks and 10 Ks and Qs of their competitors. And you're going to see, hey, what are the competitors talking about? What's going on there? You're going to turn around and do some industry research to see if it's on a uptick. Is that industry growing? If it's growing, then what you want to know is, oh, wow, how do my company that I'm thinking about investing fit in? 
all right? How do that my company, I'm thinking about investing, how do they compare with the other companies in the industry, especially the top five companies in the industry? Hey, the company I'm thinking about investing in, what's their new sauce? What makes them different? What are they going to deliver that the other companies are not, okay? Hey, where are they planning on getting their market share from? Where, in other words, what I'm talking about is where are they planning on getting their customers? How are they going to develop their market share? Is it to educate and bring on new customers, or is it going to be to take market share um, from other, other companies that's already out there? See, these are the things that you're going to be asking yourself. These are the things that we're trying to help you with at SolomonRCAli.info, okay? So if you go to SolomonRCAli.info, um, these are the things that you'll see that we're focused on. Why do we want to help companies? Because companies are having a tough time, especially after COVID, and getting capital getting access to capital. So there's not a lot of companies out there that's willing to help the low-end um, tier companies, okay? Companies that's doing less than $10 million in sales. We wanna help those companies and we wanna help them to scale. We wanna help them to grow. We wanna help them to achieve that triple digit growth. We wanna help them to become the leaders within their industry. That's what we want to do. So we want to do that by helping to arrange the capital that's necessary, okay? Betting on the right management teams who are going to reinvest the money in their company for growth, okay? who are going to bring double digit or triple digit returns, okay, so that you and I as investors in that company, okay, can reap the rewards as they reap them. That's it. So listen, everyone, I just want to take the time and just thank you guys for tuning in to Minority Business Access. I want to take the time uh, to thank you for tuning in to Minority Business Access. You know, that was my little alarm letting me know that, hey, it's time for me to get off this podcast. Hey, love you guys. Good luck. Please stay tuned for the next episode of Minority Business Access. You've reached the end of another episode of the Minority Business Access podcast. Connect with us at SolomonRCAli.info to leave a review and access more resources. We hope you enjoyed this show and found great value. See you at the next episode.